one of the things that has been going on on Twitter for our audience who don't use Twitter or at least follow what's happening in Twitter was a conversation that you and uh, Vusi Tembekwai were having on Twitter. And he had posted, he had tweeted saying that apartheid is crime against humanity. And then he said that the, that was the first fact. And then he said the second fact is that the apartheid state machinery was extremely, was incredibly powerful. And people had very different opinions on that tweet, and you two had your own opinions. But uh, can you can you give us a, a background of what happened and you know what was going on and the whole conversation? Yeah, um, the the basic thrust of it is, I think the countries that had the um, longest standing colonialism are countries within Southern Africa, and because of that, that there is a lot of uh, Southern Africans that are living today that have got an experience of having either lived under white rule or they have experienced what it is that white rule has left behind. And so with that, there's a lot of young people, not just Fusito and Bekwayo, but a lot of young people in Southern Africa that feel that the colonizers or the colonial governments were more efficient than the current liberation movements or the current black governments. So the comment that uh, Fusito and Bekwayo gave was basically saying that uh, the apartheid government was more efficient than the current South African state government. And the context in which he, he the, 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 the example that he used was to say that there's an artist, uh, rap artist that has just been uh, murdered in South Africa. Uh, and he was murdered in what looked like an assassination for a hit. And what he referenced is he referenced that particular artist. And I, I won't say the name of the artist out of respect for the family. Uh, Vusit Mbekwayo referenced that artist and said that if this artist had been killed during apartheid, then the police would have been able to find the killers of such an important celebrity in a very short period of time. And uh, of course, this uh, brought up a whole lot of emotions. It riled up a lot of emotions and um, got people talking. And many people blamed Wusi for trying to clickbait by using something so emotive. And of course, I then tuned, I, I then also jumped into the conversation and gave my own comments. And my comments were basically saying that um, there is a white couple that were politicians that were murdered in South Africa, under a white apartheid government. Until today, we don't know who the killers were. And part and parcel of why we don't know who the killers were is that the apartheid government was criminal in its own respect. It was the criminals that were behind the deaths of these politicians and the deaths of many other South Africans, that it then doesn't make sense to call such a criminal government that was actually perpetuating the crimes calling that government competent or saying that that government would have been good at catching the criminals when it was part and parcel of the criminals. And I think we all know that the apartheid government was, a, was named you know, a, a criminal state that was perpetuating crimes against humanity. So I felt it was unfair for them to be given credit for being efficient in dealing with crime when they were the ones that actually were given an entire designation in the International Court of Justice and in the International uh, 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 Criminal Court for a crime against humanity that was probably the grossest crime against humanity, similar to the Holocaust and the crimes that were committed by Hitler. I think I think you also had the conversation with Busi and everything is clear right now and all is good. Yeah, no, what, what happened is uh, Busi did a podcast on uh, uh, Penwell, uh, Penwell's uh, podcast and uh, I'm uh, uh, generally a very popular figure there. I do a lot of shows there. So Penwa was joking and saying that, I think that your record that has been set for views on YouTube is going to be beaten by Vusi. And I think very soon his numbers will surpass mine. And I was saying to Penwa that absolutely, um, let people learn, let people listen to the people that they want to listen to. And if a person like Vusi, who's world renowned, world famous, is actually going to beat my numbers, I absolutely appreciate that because if he's got something to teach our people, if you can awaken our people, that is something that is welcome. It's not something that I take grudgingly. So Vusi was able to pick up on that. And then he put up his own post to say, I've learned a lot from you. I've learned a lot from you from the history that you give. So I then had to then quote some of the things that I heard him saying in this podcast, very inspiring stuff. 
and saying that I've learned a lot from you too. I mean, for instance, I didn't even know what a Rolodex is. And I learned what a Rolodex is by listening to Vusi. <laughs> and there's a number of things that I didn't know. Um, the Magna Carta, I knew about the Magna Carta, but its origins, Vusi explained it well. So I was then saying to him, I've also learned a lot from you. So it is this mood. But I, was, I also said to him that I still haven't quite forgiven you for the comments that you made about the competency of the apartheid government. But after watching your podcast, maybe <laughs> you've made up for it. Yeah. It was just trying to create an environment of saying we're not antagonistic to each other. Because right now he's in an antagonistic fight with another South African celebrity. And I think it's actually not good for both their images, for them to be bickering and calling each other names on something like this. We should learn to debate the ideas, learn to differ, learn to try and put up the superior argument. And if we don't get to agree, as long as it's not harming anybody, then we should be able to just have, you know, a friendly way and sportsmanship of accepting that maybe we are not able to find each other on this. I agree with you. And I think in a way that is what we are missing right now. The fact that people can't sit across the table and have, you know, arguments that, you know, probably I don't agree with you, you don't agree with me, but then just sitting down and laying out our arguments and then see where it goes. It's very important for Africans to understand, to talk to each other. As Africans, a lot of times we spend our time fighting each other and not fighting the enemy. We end up making each other enemies of each other. And yet the fundamental fight that Africans are supposed to be fighting, the main fighter that we're supposed to be fighting, is liberating ourselves from an enemy and a predator, an enemy and a parasite that keeps draining Africans. And the more we fight each other, the less time we spend fighting our oppressors. And that is not going to give us liberation.